in exactly two years from today, one of these four things will happen to you. One, you'll be in an IT lab in India earning 18 lakhs, wondering why your friends abroad are making like a crore. Number two, you'll be in America, but drowning in 60 lakh rupees of debt, wondering if the risk was even worth it. Number three, you'll go abroad, but you come back after spending like a crore on your degree, wondering why the visa lottery said no to you. But the fourth one, you'll actually be happy, be it India or abroad. The choice you make in the next 60 days will decide which one you'll be. And I'm about to show you exactly how to make the right choice using this five-step framework. India or abroad, stability or risk. Let me be crystal clear about what you're actually choosing. GATE gets you into IIT, MTech or PSU jobs. Two years in India. Total cost, three to six lakh rupees. You stay close to family and the average starting salary, 18 to 22 lakhs. Safe, predictable and kinda comfortable. So Saikiran, you have given GATE. So firstly, I'll just ask you, what are the placement opportunities like after an MTech? You know, we've heard of the salary range or the kind of companies that hire after a B-Tech versus after an M-Tech, how does it improve? I don't think there is any difference between B-Tech and M-Tech there. They see uh, both the people equally only. In placement, we, we sit with the B-Tech people only. That's the main uh, benefit for us. But there are some companies which specifically want B-Tech people only, that, that is very less. Uh, suppose around 100 companies are opening for uh, B-Tech, around 80% will be open for HOSO also. Whereas GRE, it gets you MS abroad. US, Germany, Canada, all of those cool places. Two years away from everything that you have grown up with. Total cost, 40 lakhs for Germany, 1 crore plus for the US. Most people take loans of 60 to 80 lakhs. Starting salary in the US, 80 lakhs to 1 crore, 16 lakhs. High risk, but equally high reward. But high stakes too. Okay, so Suman, when did you shortlist your universities? Like what mattered to you? Was it the rank? Was it the location? Uh, if you want to make a list, go for a university that is in a college town. So co how college towns work are, imagine the entire town or city has only people who are students, professors or you know like people who work in the universities and uh, mainly their curricula but when you shortlist universities I think that every university has similar course names but different curricula and that's what you know you should research and focus. This isn't just about degrees, you're choosing between two completely different lives. So let's figure out which life is actually yours. Five questions, five screenshots, your answer by the end of the video. First question, can your family actually afford this? The gate path, a total investment of around 5 lakhs. You get a stipend of 12,000 per month during MTech. So your net cost is maybe 2 to 3 lakh. After two years, you start at an 18 to 22 lakh salary. Five years later, you're at a 35 to 55 lakh salary. So it's steady growth and almost zero debt stress. Now the GRE path. The total investment is 90 lakh to 1 crore 20 lakh for US. Most families take 60 to 80 lakh loan with their houses as collateral. The starting salary looks amazing. It's 80 lakhs to 1 crore INR plus. But you're paying 30% taxes in the US. The rent is 2 lakh per month in cities like San Francisco. And your EMI is 9 to 12 lakhs per year. You're saving, but the pressure is crushing. Um, coming to your college years, it's always said that the, the expenses are quite a lot over there. Plus there are loans. So were you able to manage a part-time job or a paid internship during college? Honestly, my college was like a media or I would say lesser than average tuition fee because it was a public school. So it was, you know, government funded and everything. But I lived in California, so that was extremely expensive in the Bay Area. So it balanced out. But yeah, I took loans. I, uh, you know, lived with roommates and uh, managing your loan and everything is fine because 
you get part time jobs there uh, on campus you you know it's very very common to work in like i don't know mcdonald subway burger king and everything if that loan amount made your stomach drop that's your body telling you something listen to that gut feeling screenshot this The second question how much do you need your family physically present with gate you're in bangalore or hyderabad so you can go home on weekends wherever you live in india when your mom or dad have a health scare you're there within a few hours your best friend's wedding you're still there diwali you're home whereas on the other hand with gre you're like 12 time zones away your mom's birthday video call your friend's wedding video call and absolute emergency expensive last minute flights may be missing work none of these experiences feel the same now that you've been here as you said i think you've been here you've been in the states for 5 years almost 5 yeah yeah so did the dream usa life did it match up to your expectations like are you happy with your life right now oh i am very happy honestly very 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 happy like i said in the beginning there's more money there's better lifestyle there's you know great people great things to learn but of course i feel doesn't no matter where you live in the us us can be pretty lonely at times and you should be prepared for that you don't have like neighbors who can you who you can chit chat with whenever you want like in india if hearing this made you uncomfortable gate is probably your answer there's zero shame in wanting to stay close to home it's not a weakness it's just knowing what you value screenshot this your third question can you handle the h1b lottery gamble after ms in us you get a 3 year work permit if you're in stem but then you need h1b to stay and h1b is a lottery last year only 26% got selected that means 74% of the people had to return back imagine you spent 1 crore you have 50 lakh of loan left and your lottery says a no what do you do you come back to india get a job at 30 to 40 lakhs that 60000 rupees monthly emi no that hurts it burns your pocket screenshot this Your fourth question, how do you actually want to learn? MTech in India pushes you deep. You work with professors on research, you publish papers, you become an expert in one specific area, maybe computer vision, maybe control systems. Companies then hire you for that kind of deep expertise. What benefit do you guys have over BTech people? Ha, huh. I I will say that BTech people if, if suppose you take example of computer science we study many different uh, subject like coa digital logic dsa we are focusing on uh, huge branches of computer science but in masters we are taking our uh, taking one specialization particular specialization and focusing on that part only so here they have more knowledge about a particular field rather than getting the entire uh, overview of the brand yeah that's the main difference but as ms abroad is bread you take multiple courses do a lot of projects learn variety you graduate knowing a lot many things do you want to be the person who knows everything about one thing or do you want to know a lot about a lot of things screenshot this your final question close your eyes you're 33 years old successful where are you are you in bangalore earning 60 to 80 lakhs close to your parents in a big bungalow you go home every weekend your kids grow up around their grandparents your roots are deep you're celebrating all the festivals or are you in san francisco earning maybe 180000 to 250000 dollars your kids have an american accent you visit india once a year you eat global cuisine but kind of bland indian food your world is wide but your roots are becoming shallow let's say missing india like maybe during festivals or family occasions so are there times where you feel disconnected oh <laughs> this is pretty subjective and i don't but 99% of the people do i don't but that's also probably because i have like 80% of my family is here 20% is in india so that's probably why i don't but uh, because almost in every big city i have some one or the other but that's why so i go to their i visit their places in you know during festivals and stuff and uh, otherwise like once in like two years i visit india as well so that that fills me up 
but uh, honestly if you want to if you want my personal opinion food so food is something that matters a lot to me and i don't get that in every city in the us i have to go through like 200 restaurants to get one good restaurant so i keep doing that which picture gave you peace not excitement but deep peace because excitement fades but peace sustains you screenshot this this is your final checkpoint count your signals where do most points go that's your answer look i'm an engineer myself i know this decision is very terrifying you're 21 22 years old and you're supposed to decide something that affects the next few decades of your life it's insane amount of pressure but here's what i learned talking to engineers first hand all my friends and others the ones who are happy and the ones who aren't everyone took a different path the gate people the ones who are thriving they're the ones who genuinely wanted to be in india close to family live a stable life going deep into their field the else which you would like to say or like a final piece of advice to just someone who wishes to walk walk like a path like you just say they give gate and then get into an iit yeah i will suggest that uh, gate is a best option to uh, pursue mtech rather than going outside there are opportunities here also you can do far better here rather than going outside ha it is tough but it is you can do it is not like that you can't do and the gre people who are thriving they are the ones who genuinely wanted to go abroad have the adventure they were okay with the risk and they valued financial growth over proximity to home if you just had to give advice to someone who wants to do a masters but they're confused whether they should do it india in india or abroad what would it be okay firstly masters in the us is very very expensive so if, if money is a concern you should rethink but if you can do masters i would highly highly recommend doing it here because it doesn't matter if you want to live here or go back to india and settle in india for the rest of your life don't let anyone tell you that going abroad is the only way to be successful i know gate people earning 70 lakhs in india living amazing lives completely fulfilled in fact one of my most successful friends he's a senior from college took gate is now earning a seven figure salary and i'm attending his wedding with his family in india in two weeks and don't let anyone tell you that taking a big loan is stupid I know GRE people also who paid off their loans in 3 years and are now earning crores living their dream abroad. Most of my friends are abroad and they're happy. Most don't want to come back as well, they're that happy. They come back here and complain about the traffic. So, both paths work. The question is, which path lets you be the version of yourself that you want to be? In the description, we've put a detailed decision framework. Download it and it has everything. financial calculations questions to ask people who've taken both paths timelines university lists loan informations everything you need to make an informed decision and then comment below are you learning for gate or gre and what's your biggest concern we read all comments and we we'll try to help you as much as possible you can even engage with a lot of other people who have commented and maybe it will help all of you let me tell you you've got this This is a big decision but it's not a permanent one. Your life will have many chapters. This is just choosing how to write the next one. Choose based on who you are right now authentically and stay true to what you want. I'm Mahima and you're watching Bear Bicep Skill House. See you in the next one.